Nicole. Don't Nicholas Nicolomo, that is your chance now. Uh, thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, pursuant to standing order 33 1, I thank lead for the adjournment of this House for the purpose of discussing the definite matter of urgent national importance regarding insecurity in Turkana East Conscience and the North Rift in general. Honorable Speaker, there have been recent cases of insecurity in Turkana East Conscience with the rate, uh, rates witnessed from the neighboring community leading to loss of lives and livestock. On Thursday, 27th of July this year, bandits attacked villagers at Lomelo Center, killing one woman, one person, injured another one, and uh, stealing a known number of livestock. In addition, on Monday, 21st, in the 31st of July, 2023, four people, namely Mr. Ezinyen Aletia from Oe, of ID number 32870974, Mr. Uh, the late Mr. Ingolan Ayton, of ID number 24389833, and the, uh, the late uh, Etir Chaptai, of ID number 2009-1399, and the late Lopem Akiyokori were killed by bandits believed to be from Tiate Conscience. Honorable Speaker, it is against this background that I seek leave for the adjournment of the House to discuss this matter of great national concern with a view of exploring possible and lasting solutions for sustaining peace in Tukana East and North Rift. Honorable Speaker, <clears throat> it is of this matter that it has come to my concern for this House to discuss over this issue of banditry in the North Rift, where Tukana East is also affected because we are in, we hail from the North Rift. Mr. Speaker, Life has no replacement. And as standing here today, the people I represent for, from Tukana East, they have suffered a lot. 38 people have lost life for the period of eight months. That is from January to death. 20, 21 people injured. And a good number of livestock being stolen by bandits, of which, Mr. Speaker, when we mention and say the community by name, calling by name for cause, sometimes we do say, let's not criminalize the community. But my question to the security agency is, if we are not supposed to criminalize the communities, from 1954, before he was born to death. Where are these criminals from these communities? Because we are, not, we are, we are supposed to be mentioning these communities by saying the Pokos or the Turkana or the Zamburu, they have raided or they have killed people. We have been told, let's be specific with our information. Can these criminals be identified and brought the books of law? Because we cannot continue losing life. When we talk of 38 lives being lost within the period of eight months, which is an average of five people in a month, Mr. Speaker, if we give a period of five years, the period I will be representing these people, how many people are we going to lose in Turkana East? Mr. Speaker, this issue of boundary in the North Rift must come to an end. And this country, or we as the leadership of this country, we need to wake up and tell Kenyans what is happening in the North Rift. Because we cannot continue through all these regimes 
We have been talking about this issue. Imagine I'm talking of this issue starting sometimes back before I was born. Now I am the member of parliament now speaking on this issue. Where are we heading to as a country? For how long will these people continue losing their life? Mr. Speaker, the Trukana people, the people I represent, they have a right to go to school. As I speak here, some students in my, in my constituency, they have not gone to school since the start of this year. If I give an example of Napayton, Nadome, Kamuge, Romelo, those kids, they have not gone to school just because of insecurity. And other Kenyans, they are just learning smoothly all over the country. And we, we are taking this issue as a, just a, a normal issue. Is it not our right, the right of those kids to go to school? Mr. Speaker, as Kenyans also, we have a right to travel. As I speak here, some roads in my constituency, they are not feasible. Not because we have a ra a a a rainfall, not because there is something wrong, but because of banditry. The attackers, they are killing people, burning vehicles along those roads. The road from Lokori to Carpedo, it is impossible. Not because of anything else, but because of these attackers. The road from Lokori via Kamuge to Carpedo, it is impossible. Not because of anything, just because of these attackers. The road from Lokwamosin to Lochiakula, it is impossible. Not because of anything, but because of this menace of uh, <coughs> attacks. Mr. Speaker, we are also Kenyans. And we have a right to help. As I speak here, some uh, health institutions in my constituency, they have been banned. Some, they have been destroyed. And people, they are not go getting treatment just because those health facilities, they were banned by the, these bandits from the Pokot community. And by so doing, people are dying just because they are not getting treatment. Because the health centers, they were banned. If I can give you an example, the health center at Napayton Center, it was banned on 1st of uh, August last year, before we went to election, where we lost about uh, 19 people. They were banned alive. Mr. Speaker, we have a right to also to live. As I speak here, I have said we have lost 38 people. These are Kenyans who are supposed to live. But they have denied by these people, they have denied them their right to live. Mr. Speaker, as also Kenyans, we have a right to be represented. As I speak here, I do miss the decision of this house. Just not because I don't want to be here. But to go down there and hence my people and bar them. Mr. Speaker, it is really a serious issue which needs to be uh, to, to get a concern from the uh, government agency. Give me a minute to, to wind up. One minute. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we also have a right to our own property, of which people from my constituency. They don't want, some of them, they, their property have been destroyed, some stolen. And now they are, uh, they own anything now, they don't have any, anything now to own. And the other thing also, Mr. Speaker, we have also the right to alien away in this country as for the constitution. But now some areas in my constituency, people have been chased away and be, be, uh, they have become dis displaced. And they have, it's their right to live where they, they have decided to live. The other issue also, Mr. Speaker, which I want the security team to know, is the, the operation in the North Rift. We are talking of operation being in the North Rift. But as I speak here, there is nothing like operation in the North Rift. Because if operation is in the North Rift, where are these uh, helicopters we are talking about? Where are the security officers we are talking about? Where are these uh, tankers we are talking about? It is nothing going on in the North Rift in the name of operation. The government needed to address the issue of operation in North Rift so that we can avoid losing lives of these people. In fact, women they are being killed. It is a shame for men to kill women and children. If in our culture, if a man dies, if you are killed looking after your livestock, we do say you have killed in the line of duty. Because that's our duty. We, we, we look after our animals, we protect them. So it is our duty. 
But why to kill women? Why to kill pregnant women? Why to kill small kids? It is a shame to these people who are killing these women, who are just innocent. Mr. Speaker, I had a lot to say, but because of time, I can give my colleagues to contribute over this issue, which it is emotional. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. The member for Turukana, Honorable Cecilia Ngitit.